Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson and this is part two of my Pathfinding and Unity tutorial series here on Table Flip Games. In part one of this series I looked at setting up the most critical components for Pathfinding and Unity, setting up a navigation mesh and a scene, followed by creating a nav mesh agent that will use the nav mesh to travel around the world. At the end of the video, I had something that looked like the scene shown here, with a game object acting as a destination and the character able to move across a flat surface through use of the nav mesh. Now this isn't terribly interesting, given you typically want to create an environment with obstacles and roadblocks that make the game world a lot more exciting. So with that in mind, we're going to take a quick look at how to place obstacles in the game world and ensure that not only does the navigation mesh recognise it as an obstacle, but that your nav mesh agent will also walk around it. So I'm going to start off with the scene from the first tutorial, and I've moved the player and destination such that, you know, it's it's um, there's a nice place to walk between each other, they've got this little bit of space between them, and also that I can place an obstacle between the two that should actually stop the NPC directly from walking over to the destination. So let's start, I'm going to create a new 3D object, I'm going to create a cube, and I'm going to place that between the two of them to act as a wall. Let's drag it over here, and I'm just going to increase the scale of it, make it 5 on the X. Eh, maybe 5 on the Y, and then something like 10 on the Z. So if we zoom it out a little bit, you can clearly see that this is now going to get in the way of the player from the destination. I've also actually got a material that I've prepared in advance, so I'm just going to put it on there, so that we can clearly denote the obstacle from the floor. Now feel free, you can play around with this, you can customise this to any shape or form, but we'll get into this later on, that how we actually need to get this to work. Because the thing is, when I play it... Well... Yeah... Um... You just walk through the wall. So you might be thinking, right, well Tommy, one of the reasons for that is that you haven't actually set up the collisions properly between the player and the wall. So we can see here that the wall has a box collider attached to it, and that the NPC has a nav mesh agent, it's got the mesh render at the box collider, but there's no means by which for the, the collisions to be recognised because I haven't added a rigid body to the player. So if I was to do that, and then play it again... Well, yeah, see, the same thing's happening. Ultimately, it's still trying to walk straight into the wall, but now the collisions are actually kicking in so it doesn't walk through it. So ultimately the obstacle has zero effect on the nav mesh agent. To resolve this, we actually need the nav mesh to recognise that this object must be considered as an obstacle when the nav mesh is baked. Even if you attempt to rebake the navigation mesh at this point, it will still ignore the fact that there is a large wall sitting in the middle of it. In fact, I'll show that you right now. So if I go over into the navigation tab again, I've got my floor, I click bake, you can see there's absolutely no difference in that blue square that's been drawn in. That's the navigation mesh, and of course if I run it again, yeah, still going to run into it. So to make this happen, I'm going to actually show you two things that you could try and use. Each of these are actually quite useful in their own respective ways. Firstly, if we actually go into the wall itself and go back into the object tab in the navigation pane, and I actually set it as navigation static, when I go back to rebake the floor, you'll see that it actually has an influence on the overall navigation space. We can see now that the navigation mesh has been broken up into separate chunks or slices. Essentially, remember that a navigation mesh is comprised of multiple slices that have been glued together, but so far our mesh was just one slice, so we didn't really have to see any changes or effects. So by actually declaring that the wall is navigation static, it's having to then compensate for that and work its way around it. If we click play, we can now see, hooray, it's actually walking past, which is exactly what we wanted. All right, great stuff. In fact, I'm going to go back in the inspector and I'm going to remove the rigid body from the player, because I actually don't need that. You'll note it was actually beginning to collide with the destination, because I still left the sphere collider on it. Not a big problem. Now, I'm going to go back into the navigation tab here, and one of the things I want to make sure is that right now this navigation area is still set as walkable. Now that's something that can come back in handy in a later point, because you could actually have an object that could step or jump up, because you can see here, if I zoom it in a little bit, the navigation mesh has actually declared that the top surface of this wall is navigable. But I don't want that, so I'm going to say that it's not walkable in the slightest, you can't walk on this wall, so when I rebake it, 
All right. You can see now the top of the surface is no longer part of the nav mesh, but it's still declared how to actually walk around it. Now the next part is I want to do something more complicated. I actually want to be able to customise the overall space within which that wall is taking up within the navigation mesh such that it actually gives us a little bit more leeway. If I go back and play this again and I stay in the scene view, you'll notice that one cool thing, because I never actually showed you this in the previous video, that you can actually see the navigation mesh being used at runtime. But more importantly for you know purposes of this video is that look how closely that player is hugging against that particular wall. I don't want that. It seems really, you know, unrealistic because you wouldn't really, if you're going to walk around an object, you wouldn't hug against it that strictly. So to make this happen, Unity uses a specific class known as a nav mesh obstacle that we can add as a component to each object. So if we go back to the wall and I add in nav mesh obstacle, and you can see here, I'm actually going to change into the wireframe mode for a minute. I'll just turn off everything else so you can clearly see it. You can see here that by enabling and disabling this component here, you can actually see the nav mesh obstacle that's been set up on the wall. Now the cool thing about a nav mesh obstacle is it allows me to actually dictate the shape through which the navigation mesh respects or responds to that wall, that object, such that when it carves up the nav mesh, it's going to take this into consideration. So right now the actual size of it is, is exactly, it's the uniform size of the actual cube. So 111 scale with respect to the original transform. Now if I go back into the shaded mode for a minute and turn back on the mesh render and the box collider and all that so we can actually see it. I might want to actually make this bigger. So make it one and a half on both the X and Y. And you can see here, if I go back into wireframe mode again, because that's hard to see, I've actually now made it so the nav mesh obstacle bounds are bigger than the actual box itself. All right, you're thinking, great. I go back in here and I'm gonna quickly rebake the floor thing is, it doesn't actually have any influence so far on the floor. And that's because we actually, in this instance, let's go back to my wall. I need to start using the carve setting here. This actually carves a hole in the navigation mess based on the bounds shown in the inspector fields. By default, this is done when an item is stationary. And it's actually a really useful tool to have for a moving object that you want to kind of continually cut holes in the navigation mesh as it's moving. That way, essentially what you're trying to do is to ensure that no object tries to pathfind through it as it's moving around in the world. So if I actually set the carving, the move threshold and time to stationary aren't exactly that important right now and we will come back to it in a later video. But now that I've actually carved out this space and I go back in and rebake it, look at that, it's actually a lot bigger. It's now respecting the bounds that I've set within that nav mesh obstacle. So if I was to do it again, you'll note that this time it actually takes a much longer path around the edge of it and it's not hugging so specifically as close to that particular wall. Now the thing is that what I've done so far is I actually just changed the original bounds there but you can see here I can actually move where it's based in the world and I can also change the shape of it itself. So I could actually decide to make it a capsule and then maybe make the capsule a little bit bigger. And you can see again, if I go back in navigation, it has an influence on how you're able to, you know, move around that particular object. So you can play around with this sort of stuff and ultimately create, you know, a more specifically how you want that character to be able to move around that object. And that's a little bit cooler. It's a bit of a shame in this instance because now I can't actually get as flush up there. But, you know, moving around it might be a little bit more realistic. It's probably not the best example to be using a capsule for a particular box, but it shows that I can actually muck around with this sort of thing. And I can even be cheeky if I really want. I'm going to move into the wireframe again. And I'm actually going to move the whole thing over by one unit in the X space, which actually creates this really weird effect where actually now there's this huge back area on the back of the object that I can't actually reach. So when I play it, and I go back in, I can't actually walk on this area here, and it has to walk all the way around like that in order to actually get to its destination. 
So in this setting tutorial, I've just been looking at how to set up any sort of obstacle in your navigation mesh, such that you can use just basic objects, set them as navigation static, and then bake them into the mesh, but also how you can use the nav mesh obstacle component in order to actually customize the available spaces that you have on that nav mesh and be able to explicitly state like kind of no-go areas. But also subsequently, as we'll see in later videos, that declaring a nav mesh obstacle makes sure that you can't path through that particular object. And in time, if an object is moving periodically you don't want that character to be able to walk through that space so we'll be able to see how this gets put to use in much later videos so in this second tutorial we've learned how to set up obstacles on our nav mesh and have a nav mesh agent factor those when walking around the space feel free to play around with this environment and create some new obstacles just ensure you set the parameters correctly and then rebuild the nav mesh after you change all this stuff in part 3, we're going to look at how to start building our own simple patrols and wander around the map following preset locations. And this will allow us to create a more realistic guard behaviour, moving around a fixed space. This has been part 2 of the Unity Pathfinding tutorial series here on Table Flip Games. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more game development tutorials. Plus, our channel is supported over on Patreon, so if you'd like to get access to our videos early, vote on new topics and get access to the original source materials, head on over to patreon.com forward slash tableflipgames. Thanks for watching.